So going back to the draft, one of the bigger surprises was that the Green Bay Packers decided to select Joshua DeGuara. He's a tight end. A lot of people feel he's undersized. In fact, it's hard to argue he's not undersized. He's only 6'2". Uh, and on top of this, uh, you know, it, it, it didn't really feel like a position of need. They kind of needed a receiver, and there were good receivers on the board. So this was a surprise. The Packers had a lot of surprises during the draft. Uh, but I actually do like DeGuara a good amount. And I think that some of his uh, issues are overblown. I actually think he could add a good amount of value to Green Bay. For one thing, I want to talk about his blocking. Because I know he's undersized, but I don't really care. I think that his blocking is really good. And again, he's only 6'2", but he is 240 pounds, which is only a little bit lighter than your average tight end. I mean, I feel like most tight ends tend to be about like 250. So uh, it's definitely not on the, he's not on the small side in terms of weight. He's on the small side in terms of uh, height. And I don't know if that matters as much as people might think it does. Like, for one thing, I think he has very good footwork. And, you know, that's the thing is that usually the taller you are, the harder it is to have great footwork. So being a little shorter can definitely help. And, like, this plays an example where uh, he's going to run out to block a linebacker. That's his assignment on the play. And what you're going to notice is that the linebacker, he realizes this. So he's going to try to get to the inside a bit. So, you know, linebacker, he's rushing uh, closer to the top of the screen, trying to get around DeGuara. Uh, this is going to be a run to the bottom of the screen a little bit, though. So DeGuara is okay with getting beat to that side of the screen, but obviously he doesn't want to get completely beat because that could allow a linebacker to get cleanly through him and make a play on the halfback. And watch how he's able to do this. Watch how he gets his hands on and gets in a perfect position to push the linebacker up to the top of the screen, which allowed a big hole for his halfback to run through. Uh, that's just what you want to do if you're DeGuara. A uh, really good play, I think. And, you know, again, nothing crazy, but he tends to make the good blocks when he has to. He's a very good fundamental football player, and this is another example where he's lined up on the top of the screen, running out to block that UCLA player right up there. And he's going to run up, and he's basically going to allow this defensive player to initiate the contact he's allowed to get the contact and again you're thinking okay 6-2 tight end this isn't the biggest guy in the world but what DeGuara can do is he can hold his own very well a lot more than you might expect from given his height uh, and watch how what a player is going to try to push him back he isn't really able to do so and is never able to get into the play and that's just again another good play from DeGuara while those two are kind of just your typical plays, I wanted to show those because I do think that I could definitely see DeGuara playing fullback a good amount. I can see that happening, and those are kind of similar plays that you might want a fullback to do, and it seems like he could potentially do that. However, obviously he is drafted as a tight end. He's probably going to play the majority of his snaps at tight end, uh, and I do think that he can be a very good uh, blocking tight end as well. In fact, there were some plays where he was looking you know, dominant out there. Like, take a look at this one. He's going up one-on-one -on -one against that UCLA player right over there. It's a linebacker, uh, and so it's not an easy matchup necessarily. But again, his job is this is going to actually be a run uh, outside of the tackle. So he has to make a very good block on this one. But watch how he is able to sort of turn his hips and get the inside leverage and not allow that linebacker to really get to the inside and be able to clog up that running lane. Again, just a good block, uh, and he's a really good blocker I think he really is you know don't let this don't let the height fool you he can definitely get it done and he can block in multiple different ways which I think is very important but of course you know you don't draft a tight end just to be a blocker you draft a tight end to you know uh, catch the ball as well but the blocking kind of factors in like on this one so DeGuara is going to move up to the top of the screen, and there's basically two things he could be doing. Uh, one could be he could be blocking uh, the defensive lineman who is closest to the top of the screen. Uh, you call this a flash, where you have your tight end sort of run to the opposite side of the field from where they're on uh, and block uh, a linebacker, and basically the reason why, or defensive lineman, and basically the reason why this is effective is that typically, you know, it's not a great idea to have a tight end block a, a defensive lineman. You know, that's a mismatch, but when you, you can get away with it in a situation like this because when you run over, you're kind of you're getting momentum, which makes it an easier block to make. And typically it will be a run to the opposite side of the field, making it not as important. But then the, obviously the other option is that he could just be running, uh, uh, you know, a fake. And this, if this is play action, he'll just run up to the top of the screen. And since it is play action, you notice that UCLA is fooled about the run. And he's just able to flip it up to DeGuara, who's able to run forward and pick up a first down. And because he is a good enough blocker, and because he's a mobile enough blocker where he, where he will run around and do several things, he is able to make a catch like that. And again, you know, I compared him to Kyle Yushek. That's right out of the Yushek playbook. Like, that's something that he very much does. And so I don't want to, you know, get Packers fans' hopes up too much, and I don't want to, you know, 
put him up to a, a unrealistic standard, you know, a too high of a standard. Yushek is one of the best fullbacks in the league. Uh, and again, Deguara might not even play fullback, so I'm not trying to make the comparison. I'm just saying there are definitely ways you can compare the two. Like, I think his route running is also something that I really like uh, on this play. Uh, it's it's interesting because he's going to basically fake as though he's blocking that UCLA player, but he's not. He's going to run out and run to the top of the screen. So kind of similar to the last play, but not exactly. Uh, and so what I like about this play is really what I want to take a look at is going to be how much he sells this initial block where he runs up and he's right, you know, very shortly. So, right. So he's not selling it totally, but he's selling it enough. So he doesn't uh, make that defensive player realize that he should be getting covered. Uh, and then everyone else is able to run and make the block. And he's quick enough that he can get to the, to the end zone quicker than the defensive back was able to make the tackle because he has speed as well, making it a very good combination. Uh, and it, again, there's a lot of things I like about Deguara, and especially for a late third round pick, I think this is I think this is definitely tremendous value. I know people would have wanted a receiver. Uh, personally, I think the real problem was they drafted a backup quarterback in the first round more so than they drafted a tight end in the third round. I think drafting Deguara in the third round is fine in my opinion. So yeah, there's a lot I really like about him. Uh, again, I think there are some criticisms about the pick as a whole, not so much about him, but just the pick. I think my biggest criticism of the pick is that you were a win away from going to the Super Bowl, and now you're drafting a position in the third round that historically the you know tight ends, it takes them a little bit to develop. And I think it, the same thing will happen with Deguara. I don't think he's going to be an immediate impact player. I think it'll take him a bit because it typically does take tight ends. Really, you know, there's always that like, you should have that sophomore jump. Usually, they don't play very well their rookie year, but then their second year, they have they kind of break out. That's the way it is for tight ends. Uh, and so, I definitely think that that could happen with Degora. And so, that's why I think a lot of Packers fans are upset is that, you know, they drafted a backup quarterback in the first round, uh, and they drafted a, a tight end in the third round. So, it's like, what are we doing exactly? Are we play Why are we preparing for the future when we won 13 games uh, and have an all-time great quarterback who's at the end of his prime? Uh, it's a bit confusing, I think, and uh, I think I agree with those Packers fans. I think it's disappointing, but at the same time, I do actually like Deguara, and like I said, I don't think the problem was drafting him. I think the problem was uh, drafting <laughs> Jordan Love. Uh, again, I, who knows? Maybe it'll work out. Uh, but back to Deguara, a lot I really like about him. Uh, I'd like to know what you guys think. What do you think of my Kyle Juszczyk comparisons? Do you think that's unfair? I honestly think it's a bit unfair too, but I think he's still very good, and I really like this. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in a Green Bay Packers uniform. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.